Okay, great. Um, so again, uh, we just wanted to uh, go over the skill gap analysis shit and let me go ahead and open that up for you guys. Give me one moment. Okay, so this this is the document here, and as uh, we can see, you guys, most of you guys have had a chance to fill out your information here, and let me go ahead and make it a little bit more visible for everyone. And uh, based on this, basically, we're going to have an idea on, you know, how to divide the teams based on your current time zones and as well as your skill level and see where you can best, um, you know, um, best succeed or, you know, best uh, showcase your skills and gain some experience. So having said that, um, for those of you who have filled it out, just um, make sure you put your name on the top uh, row here where it says name. I see a couple of, um, couple of uh, inputs without any name. So just uh, please go ahead and do so if, when you get a chance. And for those of you who haven't had the chance to fill it up, please do so. That way we can um, get the team, uh, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it, set for you guys, so we can get started from the next session. And uh, just give me one second. And uh, from here, basically, we'll go into our ENIOT presentation. Um, as you guys remember, we spoke about the ENIOT um, products last time, the application, the two versions, Enyot um, Peach and Enyot Orange. But uh, let me see if I can get some additional uh, information for you guys. And basically, we just wanted to talk about the products a little bit more so you guys can get a little bit more familiarized with the application. Uh, so just bear with me for one moment. Okay, and and um, um, at this point, I don't know if uh, Kartik, would you like to go over some of this information, or would you like me to go through this? I'm not sure. Mm. No, Shagur, definitely. I think you can go forward. I will pitch in as we go along. Um, there was the other Google document that Ruxana made that talks about a few question and answers, more like FAQ. Uh, we can go through that as well after uh, this presentation, and um, we can address the questions from the audience. Uh, sure, Kartik, not a problem. Or, or if you want me to go through the slides, I can. Either one is fine for me. Your comfort, Shagur. Um, that's not a problem. I can go over it, but I feel that you might be able to, um, you know, go over this information in a lot more details than I can. Um, if you want, I can go over the FAQ questions. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Start with the presentation, and then I'll pitch in as and when possible. Okay, Thank sure. You. I'm listening. Mm -hmm. Sure, not a problem. Uh, so, team, um, give me one second, sorry. Okay, so basically what we wanted to go over today for you guys is just, uh, you know, talking about um, the Fracasa as a company. Um, Fracasa is a global QA community with services, training, and test automation tools. As far as you guys know, um, you know, um, IT Learn is the training sector of Fracasa. And um, Fracasa doesn't only focus on the training um, side of things, but we want to make sure that we work on different um, side of IT to make sure, you know, we have a, uh, complete, um, you know, pr project in hand, basically. So uh, besides IT learn, besides training and preparing uh, you guys for the uh, QA field or the IT field in general, we also work on real-time projects and consulting where, you know, we work with live QA projects to gain real-time experience um, for, for you guys to have, you know, the skills on your resume and also the job placement success for today's QA industry or today's IT industry. Um, we do focus on test automation framework development with Selenium WebDriver Java um, in uh, using data-driven framework, keyword-driven framework, page object model, and hybrid uh, test automation frameworks. So you get a complete um, experience in all the different type of frameworks that is uh, needed in today's QA industry. And this is important because 
you have to make sure you're updated on your skills as you go. And in the IT field, we all know that we all always need to make sure we're updated on our skills. And this is why you need to have hands-on experience in all the different frameworks because you don't know which job you're going to end up in and you will um, be required to you know, have some type of experience on the different frameworks. Let's say the next job you apply for is looking for someone in page object model. And you know, this way you will get um, have some knowledge and skills in that area as well. Um, we also focus on digital branding and marketing um, where you know, we focus on search engine optimization, social media, media optimization, um, you know, using Facebook, YouTube, etc. And it's a very interesting field and we also have some trainings on that too if you guys are interested. Other than that, um, you know, besides just focusing on QA, we do have uh, many other um, trainings, IT trainings. So not just QA, um, you know, besides the IT, uh, regular uh, general IT trainings, the Selenium trainings, uh, HP, UFT, online trainings, there are 32 different courses, anything starting from database courses all the way up to, um, you know, a lot of programming core courses that are very helpful in today's IT industry. So this is just a basic overview of Vercas as a whole. And uh, again, IT learning is the training sector, but other than that, we also have our, um, you know, one of our flagship products, which is Eniot, and this is the product we're gonna get our hands-on experience with. So this is uh, something that's, that is definitely important to us. Um, we also have Atomic 77, which focuses on the development projects. Um, QA on Air is another project we are actively working on, which is going to be a very exciting, um, you know, window for the QA that are preparing for the market today because QA on air focuses on, um, you know, basically connecting QA engineers and uh, companies that are looking for QAs. And it's basically a freelancer market where um, we can link each other, we can network with each other and get work. So this is something that will be very interesting in the future. Um, besides that, we just wanted to go over our uh, company uh, motto really quick. Basically what we believe is learn IT right is our mission. So not just training and not just uh, doing the examples, but you need to make sure you uh, consume it properly. You make sure you program yourself for the IT world, right? And one of the things, like I mentioned, you need to make sure you are always trained. You constantly train yourself and you need to basically, um, you know, uh, get yourself into the IT world 100%, right? So that's why e-learning is important. And the benefit of e-learning is basically that it can be delivered globally. Just like, you know, we have our members from all over the world. And, um, you know, um, this also opens up our opportunities for remote work, uh, just like QA on air, like as I mentioned. Um, and, you know, and you can deliver the work directly to the client as br brilliantly as possible right, and as efficiently as possible. And, um, you know, and your foundation to IT is definitely critical because this is where you get to exercise all of your skills, right? Not just uh, not just your technical skills, but your communication skills, also your, um, you know, uh, ability to work with the global team, ability to work in an agile fashion, right? All of that comes into play, all of, all of that comes into factor. Um, Hands-on, job ready, skilled professionals are needed in today's industry. So you need to be efficient, you need to be ready to go, you need to be updated with today's knowledge, to today's IT industry, and all of this is basically um, extremely crucial to be successful in our IT field today. Now, our main um, objective and, you know, yes, uh, sorry. Go. I just wanted to add, thank you. Uh, to sure. the, what we believe in our caption of learning IT right, Couple more things to add to that team is when we say learn IT right and we focus on your core and the foundation in the right manner, you will actually feel, oh, is that it? Oh wow, that was simple. That was not as complex as it looked from the you know far away. Uh, and that is what we are emphasizing. Once you get that concept and then you can practice on it, you will never ever forget those. And when you talk about them, uh, in an interview or in a project, you would definitely be efficient because your core is there, your foundation is there, and you had your moments where, oh yes, now I get that, now it's easy, now let me explore from there. So that is very important, and we believe we've done a massive job in 
you know, focusing on that core for a long time. So this is a very important statement. And Shagar, I also wanted to um, add on Varkasa. You're perfectly right. IT learn though is what is keeping us together. Any art is almost a sum total of our qualification of who we are as a company uh, in the software test automation arena. QA on air is the future. And uh, team, from a live project perspective, we want you to really focus on any art because once you get this tool, you will A, get the certification. And you are certified tester or developer. And B, you will be able to start testing multiple applications, multiple projects, not just one project that takes one year, but you'll be able to use a tool and execute maybe 10 projects in a year. So you'll be able to add a lot more to your resume and that will become uh, a plus, big plus for us. Uh, thanks, Shagor. Please continue. Sure. Thank you, Karthik. Yes, thank you for that insight. Um, yes, and I do also want to emphasize is after the ENIOT, um, you know, tr uh, uh, life project, well, um, I, whichever team you're on, uh, you will be um, provided with a certification for the, you know, ENIOT um, testing and um, development. So there is ENIOT, um, ENIOT certified tester uh, certification and there's ENIOT certified uh, developer certification and we're gonna go into that a little bit more um, but for the meantime uh, one last thing I want to mention is basically we wanted to we want to connect humans and technology to build a better future right that is the main ideology of any technology giant is to make sure we have that um, you know concept come together for a better future and um, basically based on um, you know current statistics um, for IT Learn, um, for Rekas as a whole, but we, uh, for we IT can Learn. skip this one. Uh, okay, sure. we can skip this one, Shagun. Let's focus more on where Eniot is and what we do. Offer. There could be a lot on the corporate ones. Yes, I think this video is a good one. If the audience have not seen, they can watch it. But it's a five minutes talk about the whole tool. Okay, so audience, uh, if you don't, if you don't mind, we're going to go ahead and play the video for you guys. Just uh, please do watch it. This is very helpful, and uh, I'll be back right after this. Thank you. I'm assuming we can play like that. Or Ashna, I'm not sure if you got this video. Yeah, the link is uh, there. Oh. I think you can see my screen, right, Karthik? Um, we yeah. have kind of put together a great. In is is that okay? We are actually able to see and hear fine. Yeah. The face. Okay, great. It kind of combines a test management and automation into one workplace field. Uh, so once you go to anyot.com and click on join us, um, you go into a join us section where it also talks about the architecture. In put simple words, we have a web front end where you can manage all your test artifacts. And then we have a core engine which is built on Selenium with Java as a platform, which does the execution on cross browsers and generates a great report for you to look at. So once you join and log in, you would come to be uh, welcome to a dashboard, something like this. Uh, this is where you start to manage or complete your, your complete test artifacts. So right from creating modules under your application, breaking each module into multiple test cases, and each one into test steps. Uh, what we've done with any art is also the fact of reusable components to a very large extent. So we've combined the framework, automation framework concepts and put that in here. So when we talk about reusable elements, I'm talking about a page object model or a page factory. A test data gives us the ability to execute our tests against multiple sets of uh, data and that's a data driven framework. And when I say user defined keywords, these are nothing but keyword uh, uh, driven framework that we have been exposed to. All this have been built in into simple uh, uh, manageable forms where you can maintain all of this information for the application and its related testing components. Uh, once you have managed all these components and you've kind of gone through the flow, we get into the test run setup. So all that you've done manually with absolute zero coding so far, you get a chance to say which test cases I want to execute uh, from each module, be able to associate it with multiple sets of test data and say that this set of test case, I would like to execute it for 
these sets of test data and you could choose that across your application and prepare what we call as a run once your run is ready and prepared what we have done to keep things simple and for an opportunity for users to switch anytime between manual and automation testing is an excel file an excel file that looks something uh, very simple uh, all that you've done in the web ui is kind of managed and maintained here right from the application all the modules to the individual test steps now this uh, setup that is executed goes this excel file goes as an input to our desktop engine now once you kind of go through the following instructions and install the application on your desktop you can fill in the form with let's say uh, test Kartik, Kartik, and I select that Excel, which is one second. Let me see where that Excel is. All right, I found it. It's in the test run underscore demo. Uh, this is where whatever we selected for execution is kind of concentrated and we give it default time or depending on how fast your speed or network is and then we click on execute automation test at this point the engine is preparing everything in the background and will launch the individual test cases and start the execution once the execution is completed uh, we will get a report generated on a local machine that so i'm letting the execution continue team like you can see on the machine right now and let it happen for a few seconds i'll switch quickly to our, our reports so we've got one test case executed i think two of them and the remaining ones will get executed and what happens is at the end of it you will get presented uh, with uh, the entire folder with the results mentioned into it now what you do is you take that report file you have a zip file that gets generated and you put it back into your system for a later point reference so i did execute this uh, specific run and then i upload it for the later reference of how that regression execution happened uh, so for a user to see how things have performed uh, an extent report is generated that is the free tool that be using for in your orange in which it tells me that i executed four test cases in this case and it tells me exactly that each step passed no issues with it and what time how long it took uh, and at the end it is showing me why it failed and whenever a failure happens i'm able to capture and see how does the application look and why didn't it happen so when it comes to your functional regression testing these uh, simple uh, features that we built into any odd will give you a great uh, platform to make better applications overall. Um, with a high level dashboard, it tells me exactly how long the test took to complete, how many steps I executed, and where it failed, how it failed. Uh, so at any odd, you're able to quickly execute your functional regression testing, manage your uh, test suite, and also do automation run at the same time. Hopefully this will be helpful for you to get started and play around with the tool. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye now. Okay, team, I uh, hope that was helpful. Um, thank you so much for going over that with us. And uh, basically, at this point, I'll go back to our slides. And, uh, um, you know, hopefully this was uh, able to give you a better insight into the tool. And, um, you know, again, going going into the tool again, the, we just want to go um, uh, speak about the different components of any art you know obviously it's con you know um it is consisting of the framework which basically where we used on uh, data driven and um keyword driven uh, basically hybrid framework and um you were able to look at some of the dashboards and reports that are generated once the test executions are completed with the results um you know the biggest benefit is zero coding right um a lot of times you know when you when we focus on um, coding and let's say some of us uh, struggle with coding um, we you know forget to focus on what's more important which is the testing process right we want to make sure we cover all scenarios and we um, cover them effectively and make sure we find the defects and follow through and make sure we log it properly and eventually we want to make sure those defects are fixed properly right so we 
forget to focus on the actual testing process. So, you know, having said that, uh, with zero coding, you get to focus on um, the main foundation of um, a QA analyst. Um, other than that, as you can see, it is a test management tool with an automation engine. So you're not just doing manual testing. You are uh, running autom automation scripts, except without having to do the coding. And the way we can do, a, do this effectively is by using reusable components, which makes um, your testing process much more efficient. You're not having to repeat the steps. We went over this, um, you know, this um, uh, topic on our last session. If you ha if you were not able to attend, or if you uh, would like to review it, uh, please um, feel free to uh, review the last session, and you'll be able to see how we talked about reusable components and um, what's the benefit of its usage. Um, other than that, uh, we also did go over the architecture uh, uh, briefly for Enyot Orange and Enyot Peach. Um, so without me having to repeat too much information, just wanted to show you again the four different components, uh, which is a web UI where you get to create your modules, test cases, test steps, and the reusable components for um, you know for uh, efficiency. And uh, basically, once you um, uh, once you have all that input into the uh, database uh, using Java and TestNG and Selenium WebDriver. Um, and and basically the the, the core engine um, you get to uh, test it uh, you know you get to test it in multiple browsers and basically eventually um, that uh, software the any software that is installed locally on your PC and uh, once you are able to run it through the software and get the results you can just dis display those results through HTML reports and um, in your dashboard now again this is any orange any Peach is obviously, you know, a little bit newer and uh, different and faster and you know more up to date. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So now here we talk about Peach a little bit. And again, as I mentioned, it is for faster user story creation. You can actually create user stories, unlike any other Orange. Um, you'll still have the built-in keywords. Um, you have a mo more built-in keywords this time. You know, in any other Orange, we had initially 66. Now you have 110. And um, you know, obviously, with more keywords, you are having to again write less steps. So, um, having said that, uh, that also um, that and also uh, including um, the uh, the concept of Tableau, we're able to um, produce more, much more improved uh, reports and results, uh, which is which is more sophisticated, which is more uh, presentable for today's uh, industry. And um, again. Um, also, everything else is uh, pretty much pretty much the same. The test management and defect management with uh, traceability, um, and uh, actually defect management is I think I think this is improved. This is a new improvement on this version. And most importantly, I want to talk about the turbo execution, where we are looking to run up to 20 test cases instead of just one. We're looking to run up to 20 test cases uh, parallelly. And uh, this is basically, um, you know, this version's um, uh, highlight, basically. I think this is what's going to uh, stand out. Uh, but uh, having said that, this is the architecture that we went over on the last session. And uh, again, um, same, you know, four components, your, your web UI, your core engine, and then your, um, you know, basically your local execution um, and the dashboard reports. But everything has been uh, updated because the web UI is now built on uh, AngularJS, Node.js with MongoDB, and um, you know uh, using user stories this time. And um, the core engine is still ran on uh, Selenium, Java, and TestNG, with some uh, improvements, I'm sure. And then um, also the uh, execution is faster now because it's cloud-based and and it's running more efficient, much much faster. And again, uh, the reports are generated using Tableau, so we get a much better display on our dashboard, and um, you know we are able to create much nicer reports. So that is a, a, a very nice highlight of this version. Um, again, uh, uh, Kartik, should we go on to talk about QA and on air and uh, just continue this way or? 
No, I think we spoke a lot about uh, NUOT right now, even the video explained a lot. Uh, let's look at what are the remaining slides, just keep going through them. Sure, uh, sure. Yeah, this is deviating into the other things now. I think we're good with uh, what we had to. Let's switch back to more focus on what we want to do in this project. Uh, okay. The, sure. Were the slides on NUOT certified tester and developer? This is not the NUOT PowerPoint, is it? Uh, this is, uh, let me see, give me one second. This is what... Because, um, mm -hmm. I don't see anything about any of certified tester and developer. What is the difference in the slides on it? Uh, this is the one I actually received in our uh, uh, group chat. But um, I don't know if there was another one. I, uh, Shagur, excuse uh, me, yes, sorry yes. to interrupt. Uh, could you please show demo day two uh, slides, please? Yeah, sure. It shows the difference between any odd orange and any odd peach, the features and the frameworks. Uh, the one we covered last time? Yes, yes, because a few attendees, uh, they could not join the last time. So I think it will be better uh, if you can cover them as well. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you. So, uh, so yes, not a problem. So should I go over the whole slide from last uh, time? Day, or? day two, please. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. Okay, um, participants, uh, what we like to do is just go over some of the features from the last slide. Um, I know some of you were not able to, uh, you know, uh, be present in our last session, but basically this is where we spoke about the application under test, which is NYOT. And um, the project uh, details were also shared last time, but we'll go over it for all of you this time again. We just want to make sure that you have a, a good concept of what the project is going to be consisting of. Um, so as you can see, the application is NYOT, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, there are two versions, but we'll go ahead and, and speak um, speak on that topic. But um, in general, it, it is a taste automation framework for user acceptance testing. It is built on Selenium, Core Java, and TestNG. And um, again, as I mentioned before, it's consisting of data-driven framework, Keyword driven framework and page object model, which is basically a hybrid framework. Um, but yeah, you will get um, you know uh, insight into um, all of these if you are participating in our advanced um, a team, advanced training. Uh, you will be able to work, you know work on these frameworks and how to build them for any odd peach. Um, features of any odd, it is a test management tool. It does have built-in keywords, which is already um, you know, predefined by the developers inside the tool. If you're just using the tool as a test management tool, you can use these keywords to um, basically call the steps and you're not having to repeat those steps over and over. In addition, you can create user-defined keywords where um, you can actually create your own keyword where you can, um, you know, make your, um, I guess, uh, steps more efficient in, in, instead of repeating the same steps. The reusable components we went over and the HTML reports we went over as well. Um, basically, the user-defined keywords, the built-in keywords, and element mapping, uh, these things are part of reusable components where we can, um, you know, uh, I guess, reuse them in future um, test steps. So um, having said that, the two versions, as I mentioned, one is Eniot Orange, which is the initial version, which is, um, you know, up and running and, and working as of now. It is, it is a free version for a single user. Uh, there is an enterprise version, I believe. And um, in Enyot, we use PHP for the front end, for the uh, UI. Uh, Enyot Peach, again, it, it is, a, um, you know, there's a paid version for a small team of 10 members or less. Uh, well, it's intended for that. Uh, the product is, is com not completely up and running. And we this is why we come in in our advanced team, and the advanced team will be focusing on any odd peach and basically work on building the framework from scratch um, using different, you know, uh, different ideas and, and uh, skills that people have on the team. Um, but it, but uh, uh, any odd orange will be used by the intermediate uh, level team who will be using the tool as a test management tool to uh, basically test um, any um, application uh, for um, for QA analysis. Um, so coming back to any of Peach, uh, in the front end, from the front UI, we have used AngularJS, Node.js for the back end, right? 
And uh, here are the two teams. I just went over this, so I won't repeat that, but the, these are the URL. If you guys want to navigate to this URL and take a look at the tools, I'll go ahead and um, give you guys a quick insight from my end so you guys know what they look like really quick. Uh, let's see. Okay, so this would be Enyot Orange, right? This is what, the, what it looks like, and you just saw it in the video, so I won't um, repeat it, but there's the, here's where you can create the modules, the test cases, the test steps, and the element mapping, the keywords, all of that are right here. And whatever you create, it, it generates in a list on the bottom window here. And eventually, um, once you complete the test setup, you're able to uh, complete a test run and then eventually execute the test. In your Peach looks like this as of now. And other than just a join us and login functionality, nothing has been, um, uh, you know, um, I guess uh, uh, nothing has the functionality working yet, but uh, we are working on that. And this is where our project comes in. And this is where our challenge comes in. Um, again, going back to the PowerPoint, uh, oops, sorry. Okay. All right, so um, coming back to this. So in the two teams, um, I'm sure you guys can see that, you know, depending on your uh, skill level, wherever you see uh, your best fit to participate, um, you can, um, you know, opt in for one of these teams. And of course, we always tell you to take the challenge. Um, you know, don't be afraid to try something uh, that will give you a better experience, maybe a little bit more challenging for you, because no matter what, you never lose, right? You you participate in something that you're not comfortable with, you always learn something new. Um, so having said that, let's say if you're very comfortable on the testing process, I would definitely encourage you guys to go for the advanced team, and um, any your Peach will give you a much more, uh, much better experience as far as, um, you know, putting something on your resume, because you are working um, on the development side of the project, uh, the project, the product, sorry, hands-on, and uh, you're able to, um, you know, uh, have a much more, much better discussion in your interview, and companies will be much Shaku? more, yes. Sorry, I interrupted. Is there another slide that talks about in your certified tester and developer? I, before that, I do have one question, and I'm, this is also maybe more for the audience clarity. Let's go back to the previous slide, please. Sure, yes. here. Uh, okay. So are you saying, my first question is, are there going to be two teams in this project? One team, um, as you're saying, is intermediate orange, other is advanced pitch. Is that what we are saying? Well, uh, not necessarily two teams, Karthik, depending on how many participants we have, active participants. If we have enough, uh, we may have four teams instead of two teams, but there will be two different team levels. And uh, sorry if I didn't get a chance to clarify that before, but basically these are team levels, um, basically based on your skill level. So let's what say... Team level, is it an individual level or a team level? I'm not getting it. it it's a, it's a team level. No team yeah, meaning let's say if we have four teams all together, right? There would be there would be two teams in uh, intermediate level and two teams that would be advanced level. Um, and again, this is basically um, I guess depending on let's say if we have like a fairly 50-50 ratio, right? Let's say 50 people are um, yes, comfortable. I, with I got what you said. So okay. basically, we want people to choose intermediate or advanced but I don't see the difference what is intermediate and advanced yeah and so question is I've been speaking about in your certified tester as one type of classification of the participant forget teams and the second is in your certified developer which is a clear demarcation so I'm trying to understand is this similar to that same or totally different uh, yes, it, that, that's actually what I was going to go into, um, and uh, it, it is the same. It is the same in a sense where if you're part of an intermediate level team, um, Let you me will be working. It, uh, if I can, Shagur, I'll try and explain. Yes. If we're on the same yes. path, then I want to explain it very, very clearly uh, to sure. everyone. And I'm seeing this gap even in these presentations even now, so that is why the third session I've joined in is still not talking in your certified tester and developer. That is the only focus that we should have. Is there a slide on that, please? 
Um, I don't have access to that. Uh, Kartik Ruksana or Ashna maybe. So there was a slide in one of those previous presentations that you did. Just go, keep going on the slides. Let us see okay. what else is there. Okay, sure, sure. I, I don't think you're referring to this one, Kartik, because this is the one we went over last no. time. Right. That so, uh, yeah, the other one that I just um, used a little while ago, that was um, that was this one here. Ruxana, uh, where is the inert PowerPoint, like our capability PowerPoint? Okay, you know that this is really confusing. You've switched between a hundred slides so far, so I'm very very confused right now, Shagor. Okay, sorry. Um, about that. Yeah, just sc scroll through this and see because. From my perspective, there are only two keywords that I kept asking my team to keep talking, AACT, AACD. Those are the only two things. And I think Ruxana, Shagor have been sufficiently clear about that because we've already provided clarity of what they are. So uh, audience, if I don't have a visual, not an issue, but audio wise, give me about 30 seconds, 60 seconds, I will explain it to you very clearly. All right. Now, when software test engineers come into the market, when they enter IT, they assume that you know software testing, quality assurance does not require coding. It should be a decently fair enough job. This is how the industry used to think about a decade back, all right, in mid 2000s. And at that time, a lot of us entered. But when automation tools started building up around the same time, Selenium came into the market, and we saw a lot of shift left concept. People moving more closer towards development, starting early in the cycle. And then we see DevOps also. So there's a lot of complexity that has come into it. All right. Now, ENIOT is a software test automation framework. It is a tool that is used by uh, QA engineers globally. Now, to build this tool, there is a lot of coding and technology that was used. Now, an ENIOT certified tester is someone who is very comfortable in using this web UI and executing this test. They are not someone who is very comfortable or convenient with programming or coding. Uh, however, they know the general QA process, SDLC, STLC, how test management tools and defect management process in general works. They are someone who can write test cases, execute them, report defects, interact with uh, the uh, different stakeholders. So this entire role comes into any of certified tester. And you automatically, when you go and put it on your resume and talk about it in the interview, you say what is any your tool is and what you've been doing on it, how you used it. That qualifies you for, as a software test engineer. Now, the other side to it is any your certified developer. Now, the developer is someone who knows how to build frameworks, knows how to write Selenium WebDriver and Java programs that are required to run this uh, this tool and knows a lot of DevOps also because we have so much of Maven, Jenkins, CI, CD, uh, reporting that comes into play. Uh, so all that little bit more complex of how we get into coding, how we want to emphasize that yes, I want to be an automation developer, then you become an your certified developer. Those are the two demarcations, the very, very clear ones. Now, when you are looking at this live project, let us assume that you're not too comfortable in coding yet, not a problem. You start as an your certified tester, and that is what Shagor is saying, orange. Why is Shagor saying orange? It is ready for you to start implementing a project, using it, and start you know, executing, and that will get you sufficient experience exposure quickly. So that is the comfort zone a little bit more easy. Now, for someone who's more comfortable in programming, then we are saying, hey, you know what? Why don't you join the Enyot Peach team? Since we are still continuing to develop, you can look at where we are in the code and start contributing, be part of more of a programmer. Not a web developer, more of the core engine, automation engine, which is on Selenium, mainly Java. And if needed, we will use a lot of test ng and so on. But there's a lot of DevOps tools in a team. <clears throat> now, if someone who's in between, okay, I'm not very beginner into QA, I'm not very advanced into it, 
uh, but somewhere in between participate not a problem it is not bad to be visible to the other teams the good thing about our projects is when you present it back hopefully from next day onwards next session you will also see what the other teams are doing and you learn a lot through this team okay so to keep things simple you have in your certified tester as part of this project and you have in your certified developer that's a simple demarcation so orange or peach do not worry think of act or acd and then we will get you into it accordingly like shagor said i really love the participation of everyone in skill gap analysis extremely critical team and that is almost a checklist of what tools and what you need to put into your resume okay if you are at a 5 we will try and get you to 7 if you are at a 7 let's get you to 8 8 1/2 that is how it should be team we should progress now once the live project starts the whole focus will be towards how we finish with uh, up upskilling you all the skill gap analysis you have to start looking okay wherever let's a java m4 let's get it to 6 let's slowly improve that's very important is that clear team in your certified tester and in your certified developer you could start and be an in your certified tester for the next 6 months 1 year and still migrate to become a developer when you're comfortable okay so either way our platform is good for you to be able to do extreme programming or do some awesome test management kartik asked any sorry yes. to interrupt questions was yes. this the slide you were referring to Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah. Okay. I just keep going. Please. Would you like yeah, to this talks about? Yeah, just keep going. No, just keep going through the slides. You sure, don't sure. have to speak if there's an important slide they can say. Yeah, this focuses a lot on QA industry challenges, companies, and why automation projects fail, operational challenges. I uh, keep going, please. Ah, uh, yes. The, what solutions we have in the market? Keep going, please. This talks about the functionality of Orange. I think we've covered a lot of this at length. They are present out here, each and everything. Keep going. Uh, yeah, sure. This is explaining. Yeah, thank you. Can you go faster, Rani? <laughs> Oh sure, sure. I just want to lot of these. give them yes. a time to take a look at it real quick. Okay, sorry. All right. Um, so I think this is uh, going into the comparison of the different products. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think we will come to this presentation later. Let's get back to focus on this. But keep going to the PowerPoints. I don't want to uh, stop at anything which is sure, not sure. ACP or ACD. uh this is basically a comparison between orange and peach as far as ex execution time and creation time execution time and total time and this is where all the different features are laid out um this is where it talks about the certification all right uh, yes uh, this this was a presentation that i was actually looking at i thought this is what we started with i don't know how we got the other one uh, but anyways uh, team let's let's ask the audience i think we have had almost a 50 45 minute session any questions from the audience that we all can talk about Kartik, I um, had a couple of questions on uh, chat. I can go over that, and I also can go over some of the frequently asked questions that we have on our list. Um, while sure. you know, other parts. Sure. Let's go through the now. FAQ first, and then we can see if questions are unanswered. Then we'll go through individual questions, Shabur. You want sure, to go through them? Sure, not a problem. Them? Thank you. Sure. Um, so participants, um, what you know, these are the, some of the frequently asked questions, and we wanted to basically go over it. for everyone so you guys are um able to um you know uh, get insights on these topics and uh most of your questions should be answered if anything we are not able to cover 
please feel free to post it in our chat and we'll take up the questions. So first question would be, what is Anyot Orange? Um, as I mentioned, it is an automation tool used to test any web application. It is built on Selenium, Core Java, and TestNG. The test script or um, the program has been built in such a way um, that the end user does not require to make any changes to the code or create any new codes to automate the test. So you are able to, um, uh, um, you know, um, basically automate your tests. You just have to, you don't have to write any codes, right? That's a huge benefit for someone who's not uh, so familiar with the coding concepts um, uh, and, um, you know, can take advantage of uh, automating the test using this tool. The free version was launched in April 2017. And as of now, we're working on the Peach version. Um, and that brings up, uh, brings us to the next question. What is Enyot Peach? And um, after the success of Enyot Orange, we wanted to add more features, which will have a you know, much more positive impact on our user satisfaction, um, user um, you know, um, uh, experience. And these features are still under development, like multi-threading, cloud execution, visualization via Tableau and so on. And these concepts are uh, much more sophisticated. And once the product comes together and you will see that, um, you know, what a difference it will make. And you being part of the development process, you feel much more proud, much more uh, comfortable and happy using the product. And basically you guys will become the best advocate for the product. Um, I know for a fact because I have used Anyot Orange and I feel that it's a very helpful tool. I really like it. Um, question, uh, which framework are we going to use for Peach, Anyot Peach? It depends on you and your team members. It, you have the opinion to choose or use any framework that you want. Um, you can use the um, existing Shagur, code. In, yes. In, in this case, um, we will, they're already going to be exposed to the three important frameworks. See, the linear and functional decomposition are very basic. That any, even any other certified tester will easily understand how to write basic Selenium web driver. Sure. Data driven framework, keyword driven framework, and page object page fact. These three things are the key framework that they will definitely be exposed to. So there's no more choice because Orange is built on it, Peach will be built even better on it. So sure. they will get exposed to all three frameworks. Okay, sure. So, so I'm I'm assuming that uh, we're gonna we're gonna get exposed to all three at some point, right? And we're gonna absolutely uh, at every single point, either as a user of these frameworks or a developer of these frameworks, that is, the tester or the developer. Sure, sounds good. Um, mm -hmm. And guys, you can use the existing code, um, which will be shared with you. And basically, we're gonna start building on top of that. Uh, so you'll see that you know Anyot Orange has been built on the three uh, frameworks that Karthik has mentioned. And um, you can also start from scratch if you want, but uh, uh, you know, I guess using the existing code would be, um, I guess, a, a good starting point to go in the right direction. Um, selection of tools for better reporting, logging, maintenance is entirely up to the team. Whatever you guys decide to use as your, um, you know, uh, but except for um, the intermediate level team, uh, any Auto orange would be, I guess, your primary um, tool for test management. For defect management, you can use, you know, um, Excel. Uh, you can use uh, Trello for project management, I guess. Uh, but yeah, it's entirely up to the team. The team lead, you can decide amongst yourself. Um, how, next question is, how will this live project help me in the future? Now, as we mentioned, as Kartik has mentioned, um, we have two certified training programs, which is Anyot Certified Tester, AACT, and Anyot Certified Developer, AACD training. Um, those who will work on the Anyot Orange will get the AACT certificate after completion of the project. Um, and those of you who will be working with the, on the advanced team, uh, or you guys will receive a AACD certificate which will be provided because you'll be working on developing a new peach, right? And so certified ASCT uh, will gain in-depth knowledge of how to run these test cases with an automation tool. Uh, in this case, the Anyot Orange version. Uh, working with this tool, you will know how, to, how long it takes to automate the test, um, how to efficiently um, you know, uh, create your 
uh, test cases, um, test modules, um, uh, and then uh, eventually the test steps and the reusable components. This is one of the most common interview questions. And um, uh, talking about this process alone will definitely get you through that door, right? Um, now, if you, particip uh, uh, if you uh, participate as a certified um, uh, developer, meaning ASCD, you will learn how to build the framework on top of that. And um, you're going to be working in an agile environment along with the development team. Um, and uh, you will be working with the offshore team, global team. Uh, so you will know about team participation and you know meeting deadlines and going to the daily scrum meetings, right? Your role will not only be limited to testing, but also in the development of the product. Now, this is a huge plus, as I mentioned, and I cannot you know, speak more on that. Uh, but this will make you confident enough to face any interview questions and talk about your work and skill level. And uh, participating in a project like this uh, definitely makes you stand out in the crowd. So you definitely want to take advantage of this opportunity, um, you know, and, uh, you know, get yourself um, up there, basically. Now, question, shall I get to work with DevOps tools? Now, we have not decided any particular tool for you, but as Kartik mentioned, um, we definitely can look into, um, you know, uh, Maven, Jenkins, uh, GitHub uh, for, you know, m much more efficient, um, you know, process for the, de the development process. Uh, you have the freedom to use anything that can be integrated with an application under test. Um, you know, having said that, it's something I guess also can be decided amongst the team and um, I guess uh, with the team lead and uh, we can uh, definitely consider that. Now, so, uh, Shago, yeah. on ahead. that specific DevOps tools, I just want to add a little. Uh, team, on this, let us uh, do this. Together, we, we already are using certain tools, GitHub, Jenkins, Maven, and so on. And let us see the need for any additional tools that are required for it. Uh, do we also want to use Trello for project management, a few things that we kept doing? Very critical to understand how to work in a team in a remote environment, especially none of us are together. So a lot of uh, initiative comes up. E-working is a critical art team. Once you are working uh, remotely in a very good manner for you to be able to land in to the office and continue doing the same will be pretty easy uh, because the discipline of working from home really gets shown. Now the reason I spoke about the word discipline of or doing this project from home and how much you participate is primarily because you now DevOps is something that even we have been exploring and working for the last few, uh, I would say maybe a year and a half or so. Uh, but I don't think we have any in-house like experts, experts yet. Uh, but we should together explore and look at it. Now, the core engine, a lot of these things, we are already have done a lot of coding. So once you come in, you'll see the code you look at okay what is remaining who wants who can be assigned which task and so on but a lot of your new your time can be on devops learning these new tools and these tools will really add a lot of value in profile team and this is something i'm not saying that you'll become an expert in this four to six weeks but you'll get a good exposure and you'll be comfortable able to speak about it all right so very critical uh, and what tools they are, because there's so many tools in the market, we should choose the tools which are applicable for the project, and all of us must use them. And consciously, we'll try and take whichever are the latest good tools in the market. Did that make sense? Shagor, Uksana, yes, team? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to motivate you that let us all work together and build DevOps, but with some discipline and structure. Uh, if it's Java, Jenke, I mean, few other things, we can really breeze through. Uh, and we also have like, you know, people like Shankar and so on who can really guide us through them as we keep going. Sounds really interesting, team. So the structure will put it and then you can start participating uh, through it. And as you see, not everyone will pick up everything immediately. Not an issue. Instead of, you know, picking up five, six tools, let's pick up one. But put all the names in the project in your resume. But you can focus on one tool first month and keep building it slowly, one day at a time. Sure, absolutely, Karthik. And uh, 
you know, any complex process or any complex project, it all starts from a simple task. So, you know, once we get comfortable with scripting and once we get comfortable with the frameworks, um, you know, we can definitely take a look at those options, you know, but... Uh, very, very for sure. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. So, um, so we, we can get to the next question. Um, next question is, shall I... Oh, sorry, we already covered that. What if I still want to work on this project for a longer period? Um, yes, you're most welcome to volunteer as a QA or developer um, in this project like sometimes the project is ongoing and you're definitely uh, welcome to participate longer and if not, um, you know, for some reason if the project has uh, come to a halt or come to an end, we definitely have uh, other projects going on and you're definitely welcome to uh, participate and, and get more experience, um, hands-on experience on these projects. Um, next question would be how shall I know which team do I belong to? Uh, now, this uh, answer, I think uh, Roxana has posted a document in our chat, which is a Google document, which will have your, uh, have the, oh, actually, sorry, this, this document we will post afterwards uh, based on the document that you guys have filled out, which is the skills gap analysis. And based on that, based on your current time zone, uh, as I mentioned, and based on your skill level, uh, and I guess your, uh, you know, your uh, wish to participate in the type of team, um, as a, a ASCT team or ASCD team, we will go ahead and uh, form the teams. And then uh, this document that we'll, we'll, we'll share on the, um, a, a Google document that we'll share with you guys, will have the name of your team, team members, and the contact information. And at that point, you guys can um, basically get in touch with each other. So that brings, to, brings us to our next question. How often do I get in touch with my team members? And answer to that is basically, uh, communicate every day if possible, right? Because you always want to constantly motivate each other, never fall behind in any of the tasks, right? So yeah. any time um, that you can spend out of the day, um, you know, you can use WhatsApp group, you can use Skype, go to meeting, uh, free conference, any mode that you feel comfortable with, you can create a group and start communicating. Sorry, did yes, you want to Yes, you know, very truly, rightly said, Shagor. So you're always connected. It's not that two times only I will. Don't put those formulas. Stay connected because you're e-working. You're not physically present. So be very proactive, uh, but don't just say hello, good morning, not like that team. More of a uh, project and be contributing, truly contributing. Once you fine-tune this kind of a work, uh, especially because you're not visible, we don't know what you're doing, how well are you communicating, how interested you show, and how much you're actually delivering also to the project. If you're able to do these few things, you will definitely be so job ready in the next six weeks. I'm very, very confident. And one very critical thing, team, the reason I am also trying to spend a lot of time in this with this audience is this is going to be our next pool of hot list. Um, in our company, Varkasa, we also do consulting, so we do placements and our hot list are the most eligible people who can get placed at a different client locations, uh, mostly US, also in India. And for this hot list, it's always, you know, we keep having to add more people. So people come directly from training into the hot list because they are good. Some of us go through this project experience as well. Now, you are stepping up into the hot list team and we really want to prep you and prepare you correctly so that you won't fail. That is our intent. Sure, Karthik. Thank you. And uh, so, yeah, having said that, I mean, this is a, a, a definitely a great opportunity to get that, um, you know, uh, practical knowledge and practical um, uh, experience to work on a life project with all the components come into factor, right? Uh, you will be interacting with actual people that are working on actual parts of the projects and definitely take advantage of this. Um, how often do we give um, our team uh, updates? Now, as we mentioned in the last two sessions, we will be meeting twice a week for team presentations. Um, you will receive an email with the link to join the webinar, um, basically for the paid session. So it'll be a different link. So for those of you who have signed up, um, you know, uh, definitely look out for that email. And for those of you who have questions or need help with signing up, 
you can email our team at learn at itlearn.com and uh, definitely sign up for the paid sessions. We're going to get started soon and you guys will all receive an email with the link to join and the time timing of the, uh, the sessions. But other than that, besides that, again, your team meetings, your individual team meetings can occur uh, two, three, four times a week um, at your uh, convenience, you know, whichever time you guys prefer based on your time zone. And we try to group you guys together in similar time zone. That way it's not too much of a time distance, you know, too much of a gap. Um, so, you know, uh, definitely take advantage of that. And those team meetings, uh, as Karthik mentioned, it'll be very straight to the point. It'll just be your uh, update, just like a Scrum meeting, right? What have I done? Where am I stuck? What do I need help with? How can I improve, right? Those kind of questions should come up and it should be a quick, you know, uh, 15, 20 minutes meeting and uh, that's it, you know, so you can just keep moving. So instead of having an hour meeting like every, you know, two, three days, you can instead just have those short meetings, short but very effective uh, meetings within the teams. Um, so yeah, having like said that, take I action think, items, quick ones, and don't don't try and be very conscious of how much time. Team, exactly, that's a very well said thing. Agile things, very quick, 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Doesn't have to be 30 minutes, one hour meetings every time. Save a lot of time. Show efficiency. That's so critical in our workplaces. And uh, this, this um, lot of what we will do, team, are mutually beneficial. So our participation is equally important because we are building not only the application, but we're also building the certified testers and developers. And we have a huge uh, potential for job opportunities in consulting. So for us, it is extremely important that we uh, keep the discipline and really groom you for a job placement now. This is the opportunity, all right, where we are doing both certification and project team. All right, all the best, everyone. Thank you from my side. Any right. final questions that I need to take from the audience? Ashna, Rixana. Kartik, I noted down two questions, and I think uh, if, uh, let me check, both of them come from uh, Manju. I think there's another question, but I'll get to Manju's question first. Um, basically, the uh, first question is, do we start with requirement gathering analysis? What is the process of any of testing? So to answer that, yes, absolutely. Just like any testing process, you are going to um, effectively uh, complete your requirement gathering process, right? And um, after you've done that, you will, you know, uh, figure out your test scenarios. Uh, prepare your test cases, um, you know, using uh, analysis uh, and all of that, and then any test data necessary, um, and then eventually you will go through the process, the same process you would do, you know, go through as a manual tester or uh, automation tester. And I just want to emphasize on one thing, team. Please note that this is a Selenium live project. It is not a QA live project, all right? While, like Shagor said, we have to go through all the fun fundamentals for sure. Please do a fast track on them. Spend lesser time on those basic non-Selenium, Selenium, and lot more towards Selenium. Okay, so you should be AACT, AACT side a lot more. Um, so uh, most of the requirements, rather than requirements, right? We should start putting it as the modules and test scenarios directly. So we'll talk a little bit about how we fast track. Um, and Shagor, uh, I'll be having a couple of follow-up calls of after the uh, this meeting, where we'll kind of put that structure and we'll answer that question. Uh, sure. What's the next step? Because I just want to ensure once we know how many people are there exactly and what it is, we can come up with a decent plan in two days. Sure, that takes sounds good. Uh -huh. And um, so Manj Manju had another question. Uh, it says, so we will be developing automation as soon as development is done um, to answer Can that I maybe uh, try and answer yes. that yeah like please, please. we already have been developing this for the last two years and your orange is now our product in the market peach is upcoming so once you get into the team manju you will continue to develop this framework so you're joining this project midway and when you're continue to develop you will definitely have that first one week time where you go through all the 
code and where we are today and then you also know the gap and the requirements uh, and we continue to do from there. So the automation framework or automation whatever word you used has already been happening now you join the project. Thank Did you. Did I Karthik. answer it correctly Shagor from what they said do you want to add to it? Or, uh, uh, has I also been covered it pretty well. That's good thank you. And um, so we have a couple of more questions. This comes mm -hmm. from uh, Anand and um, the question is can we attempt both projects at the same time? Um, Perfectly yes. Definitely yes. It's your rigor, it's your time and how much you want to put in. ACT and ACD. You can do it both. What happens is even if you want to be an NUH certified developer, you automatically need to know about ACT. So it's almost like a uh, upgrade. So this is not two different streams team. ACT is considered level one, ACT is level two. So once you get into it, exposure to both is possible. It is amount of time and how much you can handle. Uh, but again, be ready to fail. It is okay because failures in this project are acceptable. Uh, but then once you go to your project where, you know, at a client site and so on, then it will be much more critical. Um, so give it an attempt. If you, that's a great question. So I would say go for it. An Anant, Anant, you said, right, Shagur? Yeah. Yes. 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 ACT, ACT. You can do them both together. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. And uh, I think the next question. Um, I, I think Roxana might have answered some of these questions, but I'm not sure. But um, there was another question uh, from Tejasi, I believe. It says, I'm comfortable with testing processes, but looking to shift into automation, not so comfortable with programming yet, but keen to learn. What certification should I go for? Do you I want to take that card? Just go for, yeah, ACD, uh, because you're already into the testing process. When you do an any certified developer, you begin with understanding what the web UI and the process or how the tool works. So you do the basic, you know it easily. And then, From there, 80 90 percent of your time is spent. Cut that. Am I back? Audible? Yeah, you, you, uh, we lost you for a second, but now we can hear you. Yes, so go for ACD certified developer, please. And, and we will guide you, we will take you through, we want you to be. And, uh, you know, it may take some for some of us, may take six weeks, some of us, it may take three months, and that's not a problem, it's amount of time. Go with it. Uh, we need to keep up. Okay. Thank you, Kartik. Okay, and uh, one last question I have here from Lenora. Uh, teams chosen when? So, um, assuming you're asking about when we're going to form the teams, Lenora, uh, as I mentioned, we are, uh, well, as Kartik has mentioned also, that we should be able to put things together in a couple of days. So I would say just, um, you know, keep an eye on your email to uh, receive something from the IT Learn team. And, um, you know, um, either, uh, if not through email, definitely on our next session, we'll definitely sh uh, share a link for that Google document where you can see your uh, team, uh, where you can see your name under a team. So uh, we'll definitely uh, get to that as soon as possible. Okay, and let's see. Okay, um, uh, uh, Kartik uh, Tejasri has a question. I think uh, uh, you are not audible for for a few minutes or a few seconds. Sorry. So basically, the question is, uh, sorry. Uh, I, I guess uh, basically you're asked to repeat it again. Would you mind? Sorry, we cannot hear you, Kartik. Okay, participants, um, I'm not sure if we lost Kartik for a second. Uh, but uh, yeah, I hope all the questions are answered. Um, 
as far as ACD, uh, you know, Kartik just want to um, basically talk about uh, if you have the if you have the uh, you know comfort level uh, with the testing process, definitely go for the ASCD. So basically, that's where you can get to the next step, right? You can use your testing skills. You can, if you're not comfortable with programming, but if you have the intention to learn, go for it because you know this is where you can take the next leap into the next um, career level, right? So definitely go for it. You're never going to be left behind. You're not going to feel uncomfortable. You will always have something to contribute to that project. So definitely go for the ASCD. Um, that you see. So don't um, don't hold back. Uh, please do take the leap of faith, and um, you know I will definitely be there to support you in any um, way possible. Um, so having said that, I think we've gone over most of the questions, uh, participants. Uh, you know, if we if you do, please review uh, our video from today, and uh, if you missed the last two sessions, please do review them. A lot of the um, topics and questions are answered. Uh, those are very informative sessions. Uh, you'll definitely find them helpful. If you have any other questions, please do bring them up in the future sessions and we'll definitely cover it. Um, but once again, um, I do want to thank Kartik for his uh, inputs. It was definitely helpful. I want to thank everyone for joining in for our uh, demo session day two today. And we're looking forward to seeing you guys in the paid session. So, you know, uh, uh, look to look forward to working with you all. All right. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks. Thank you all. Thanks, Shagor. Uh, thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you.